this is a new edition that was um, made by a specialist for a specialist musician. But when I take a look at this piece, well, there are no dynamics, none whatsoever. There's no indication of tempo. Now, already for a number of modern musicians, this is an unusable score. And then when I, take, when I look on the second page, there's something that's even more distressing. All I see, essentially, is this. Now, it sounds a little bit lean. Um, is there an indication of who's supposed to be playing with the soprano? No. In fact, there's just one line. And then it goes on, it's the same thing. Well, it sounds like a kind of a, a schoolboy's exercise. And it certainly doesn't have much uh, sensuality. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to it for too long. But these are the things you see that we know about and which, I mean, I, I don't mean to, be, to sound smug about that, but it's just, this is our training. We, we take a look at this line. I said to myself, well, fine, this might be for violence, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a solo oboe on that line there, and I'm going to have very soft strings, maybe muted, playing that second violin line and the viola line and the bass. But we also have to have something going on here. The soprano starts, if love is a sweet passion, why does it torment? As I say, no dynamics, no indication of who's playing, no tempo uh, indication whatsoever. Fine. How am I going to solve the first problem of tempo? If love is a sweet passion, why does it torment? Now, we're not going to do this as a jig, are we? It's not going to be. If love is a sweet passion, no, it's not going to be a patter song. The text is fraught with, uh, with oppositions, with important words, with a kind of bittersweet. Now, we're getting a bit of a shape already, because I'm, I'm adding something which is not here. That's to say harmony. Why is the harmony not there? Because this is improvised for the specialist. It's given off to a theorbo player or a harpsichordist, maybe an organist, who's going to realize on this bass, first of all, chords, which will then flesh it out and give some harmonic sense. But how, what, what is sense to this in terms of the tempo or uh, dynamics? It comes from what? The words, essentially, yes. If love's a sweet passion, why does it torment? If a bitter, oh, tell me whence comes my content? Since I suffer with pleasure, why should I complain or grieve at my fate when I know it is in vain? There's a syllable for every note, which means that something is happening here which is very important. It's text. the text is going to be foremost, which means we can't have a tempo which is going to be too fast, and we're not going to do really justice to the words if it's too fast. And dynamics, well, if I were an orator, if I were an actor, I'd certainly look for the key words, 
I'd try to think of color for uh, the piece. Um, and I'd try essentially to give an idea emotionally of how I would want to sort of feel the words in this piece. Since I suffer with pleasure, why should I complain or grieve at my fate when I know it is in vain? Yet so pleasing the pain is, so soft is the doubt, that at once it both wounds me and tickles my heart. Now that's already a, a, an encyclopedia of dynamics, you see. Purcell should know, I think, is that I love him, and I, I, I have a, uh, an awesome kind of respect for, for what, he's, what he did. And it's, it's very warming for me to think that so many years after his death, of course, he's still as young um, and uh, as vibrant as he was back when he was alive, the last two, you know, all too short of life.